Welcome to Frank's Diana Explains. Today's topic is understanding logic gates. This is a very exciting video because it answers a pretty fundamental question, one I was really keen to find the answer to when I first encountered logic gates as a teenager. How can we build electronic circuitry to implement those Boolean gates that we have been studying in an abstract mathematical way? If you're keen to find out the answer, like, subscribe and keep going. Our starting point is the logic gate. We understand how AND, OR and NOT work in an abstract way. We understand we can combine and cascade them to make more complicated circuits, even circuits that can perform arithmetic in binary, but we want to know how to make those gates out of electronic circuits. Let's start with uh, this electrical switch, which I rescued from a dead appliance. It has two terminals here in black and a rocker button here on top uh, with a 0 and a 1 on it. And that rocker switch is the control input which I can operate with my finger. The outcome of setting the switch to 0 is that its two terminals are electrically disconnected, whereas if I set the switch to 1 then the terminals are electrically connected uh, or short-circuited and this is uh, our logic 1. So 0 is disconnected and 1 is connected. Now imagine I had several switches, say three of these switches, and I wanted to build the logical AND of my inputs. So I would want the whole combination of these switches to be connected AND to AND only if all the individual switches were set to 1. Uh, how would I do that? So here are my three switches in series and this bigger composite component is connected end-to-end, -end, meaning logic 1, only if all these switches are individually connected at logic 1. And so this is uh, the AND function of the three switches. Could I do an OR gate instead? This means a composite two-terminal circuit such that its two terminals are connected, meaning logical 1, if and only if the logical OR of the inner switches is 1, meaning at least one of the inner switches is set to 1, is connected. Uh, with moments thought, I see that, yes, of course, all I need to do is connect the inner switches in parallel. Then, if any of the inner switches is set to 1, then uh, that switch provides a path from uh, the first to the second terminal of the composite circuit, uh, regardless of what the other switches do. So this is an OR gate made by connecting these switches in parallel. And the next fundamental logic gate we studied was the NOT gate. How can I make a NOT gate with uh, this, this type of switch? Uh, well, here I scratch my head a little bit and I, I can't quite figure out how to do it with just this mechanical switch. I would need a slightly different primitive. Maybe I could argue that I can make a NOT by uh, taking marker and relabeling the button on my mechanical switch so that uh, this 0 is overwritten by uh, 1 and so when I press what is now 1 uh, the switch is disconnecting its terminals and when I press 0, which is what used to be 1 uh, then now it's connecting the terminals. So this is slightly cheating of course but it's, it's good lateral thinking. Let's leave this thought aside for now and get back to NOT uh, in a little while. As I keep thinking about physical implementations of logic gates, I may notice that uh, uh, I may implement logic gates with things uh, other than electronics as well. For example, I might have a, a padlock that keeps a door shut and I may say that uh, 0 is open and 1 is closed. Now if I lock the door from both sides with a padlock on one side, and another padlock on the other side, for example, then uh, the door is locked by the OR of the two padlocks, because if either of them is locked, then the door is locked, regardless of what the other one does. And they both have to be open, they both have to be at zero for the door to also be open. Uh, but with a different topology, I might uh, have several padlocks and I might um, I might make a, a kind of a chain of padlocks, like this. If I stick the padlocks 
in this configuration this one doesn't even close there we go if I stick the padlocks like this and I bolt this side to one side of the door and this to the other side then uh, they must all be in a position one they must all be locked uh, for the door to be locked because if any of, of them is open then I can open the door by undoing this chain it's a slightly contrived example but shows uh, another physical implementation of um, the logic gate of and an or but note also that what we said works under the interpretation that one means closed which of course is totally arbitrary if you were to say instead that uh, one means open and zero means closed which you're perfectly free to do uh, then in the same physical configuration we had at the start where we had one padlock on uh, either side of the door uh, then you obtain a one for the door meaning open only if both locks uh, are at one which is instead the logic function of and not or like it was before so if the first lock is open and the second lock is open uh, and the third lock and the fourth lock uh, they're all open then the whole door can be opened so the meaning assigned to 0 and 1 counts as much as the topology of the interconnection to uh, determine what uh, logic function we are implementing but that is an aside now having seen how much power there is in changing the interpretation can we achieve anything interesting by using alternative interpretations well for example so far we have assigned the meaning that one means connected electrically and zero means disconnected uh, but what if we said for example that one means that the output of the gate is a high voltage and zero is a low voltage totally different interpretation uh, how could we implement it with our mechanical switch if we have just uh, this switch like before how can we arrange things so that an output of zero for my gate is low voltage and one is a high voltage well I could attach one end of the switch to the power supply which is by definition the high voltage of my circuit uh, and then uh, when I set the switch to one then uh, the other terminal will be connected short-circuited to the power supply and therefore the other terminal will be at a high voltage uh, when I set it to zero then uh, the other terminal which I take as my output will be disconnected from the power supply so it won't be at a high voltage <laughs> unfortunately I cannot say it will be at a low voltage because it will just be floating it will not be uh, driven to anything so that's not very good so uh, a further fix uh, will be for me to connect this output to ground with a pull down resistor this means that if my input is one my input being my finger on the switch is one uh, connected then the output is a high voltage because it's short circuited to the power supply like before uh, but if but the input is zero then the switch is disconnected and so the pull down resistor pulls the output uh, down to ground which is a low voltage which is zero so that's good well, sort of good uh, what have we achieved our output follows the new interpretation that's good uh, one means high voltage and zero means low voltage but the circuit we built uh, looks pretty useless because you basically put a one on the input and you get a one on the output uh, and you put a zero on the input you get a zero on the output so it looks like in practice it does nothing but what happens if we invert the topology and connect the switch to ground and we connect the output of the switch to the power supply uh, with a pull-up resistor then at that point if we set the input of the switch to one then uh, we short circuit the output to ground giving a low voltage zero uh, whereas if we set the input to zero then we disconnect the switch and the pull-up resistor takes the output to logic one so now we've made ourselves a not gate and we're making some progress we we did the logic gate that we were not able to make before so now that's interesting now do our and and or combinations still work let's check with and I connect one end of the series of resistors to ground and the other end is my output okay so this is my input 
a b and c for example and my output uh, call it z uh, i attach it with a pull-up resistor to the power supply then if all my inputs are at one uh, all the switches are connected and this output z is short circuited to ground so this is zero so one 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 gives me zero but if any of the inputs is zero then the corresponding switch will be disconnected and so this output will be not short circuited to the ground and will be pulled up by the pull-up resistor which will make it a logic one so as soon as there is a single zero in here the output goes to one but if all the inputs are one then the output is zero this is actually the truth table of NAND not of AND anymore let's check if this works with OR as well we touch one end of the parallel of switches to ground and we pull up the other end which is our output to the power supply with a pull-up resistor so now we see that our output will be short-circuited to ground as soon as any of the inputs is connected as any as if any of the inputs is one then the output will be zero whereas only when all the inputs are zero and all these switches are disconnected then this will be left uh, disconnected from this and will be pulled up to the power supply to uh, logic one so we have uh, all zeros give one and all other combinations of inputs give a zero uh, and so this is the truth table of nor so like before the topology of the switches gives us in this case and in this case or uh, whereas uh, having attached the ground and power supply in this way gives us the inversion the not uh, which is the new part compared to before so that's great because by using this trick that gives us the ability to do not uh, capability to invert uh, we can now implement all possible logic functions however that's not quite true because what we cannot do is use the output of one gate to drive another gate it means we cannot construct uh, complex functions uh, that's because in here uh, the output of this is a high or low voltage but the inputs are my finger clicking the zero or one on the switch that's a pretty fundamental problem the domain of the input is my finger pressing zero or one uh, whereas the domain of the output is a high or low voltage and uh, it would be much nicer if we could make the input domain be the same as the output domain what we need really is to use a switch whose control input is not my finger but a high or low voltage so let's pretend we have such a switch we can buy an electronic component that does that uh, it will have two terminals uh, that get connected and disconnected uh, which we'll call the source and the drain uh, and another terminal which we'll call the gate that uh, acts based on sensing a logic high or low voltage and when the gate is set to a high voltage at one then the switch connects the source and drain and when the gate is set to zero then it disconnects the source and drain that's the equivalent of my mechanical switch but now the input is a higher low voltage instead of my finger and so it can be driven by another gate now this component actually exists it is called an n-type MOSFET where MOSFET is an acronym for metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor at this point many textbooks would digress into explaining uh, in careful detail how the MOSFET is made uh, and the PN junction and why it works the way it does and so on and so on but I won't okay I'll just tell you that for our purposes of implementing logic gates it is this, this component is sufficiently well described by the simplified model that it acts like a switch that connects its two terminal source and drain when the gate is high and it disconnects the terminal source and drain when the gate is low this isn't super precise it glosses over some details that are sometimes important but it's enough for our purposes of making logic gates so we basically pretend that the n-type MOSFET or NMOS is a voltage controlled switch now what happens to our NAND and NOR gates from before I replace the mechanical switches with NMOS transistors uh, and let's see what happens 
exactly like before this series of NMOS transistors is only connected uh, when all the NMOSes conduct which means when all these inputs are at one uh, and at that stage then uh, our output Z is uh, short circuited to ground and the output is zero uh, and in any other situation if there is a zero anywhere in the inputs then one of the NMOSes will be open disconnected uh, and uh, Z will be pulled up to a logic one by the pull-up resistor. So this continues to be the NAND gate. And the same if I replace these switches with NMOS transistors in the NOR topology, it will still remain a NOR gate. They behave exactly the same, the only difference is that they are now driven by a high or low voltage instead of my finger which is great because it means I can use the output of one gate to drive another gate and so I can cascade uh, those combinations of transistors to make more complex gates to arbitrary depths. Great. So while we are at it, uh, note also that there is another type of uh, MOSFET called the P-type MOSFET and it works uh, very similarly to the N-type except that the source and, and drain are shorted not when the gate gets a logic one but when it gets a logic zero is the same as the nmos except that there's a little negation ball on the gate to say that the uh, gate acts the opposite to what the nmos does so circuit symbol is almost the same but it's distinguished by this negation here interestingly i can create dual topologies of the nmos topologies we have just seen if i connect a series or a parallel of PMOS transistors with one end attached uh, not to ground but to the supply voltage and the other end which is going to be the output pulled down to ground by a resistor instead of pulled up in the case of NMOS. So what happens when I do that? Let's try. If I have this series of PMOS transistors then the series will always be disconnected and therefore the output will be pulled down to logic zero except in the only case where all the PMOSes are conducting uh, which happens when all the inputs are at zero so zero 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 everywhere gives me a conducting series and therefore a connection to logic one zero 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 gives me one any other combination with a one with ones anywhere on the inputs uh, will end up disconnecting this series somewhere and so this floating um, output will be pulled down to ground to logic zero. So all zeros on the input is logic one, uh, anything else is logic zero. So this is actually the uh, true stable of NOR, not of NAND. So NOR by making the dual of the original configuration, switching all the transistors from NMOS to PMOS and switching the connection to ground to power supply and pull, that, pull up to power supply, pull down to ground, uh, the dual circuit is now becoming NOR. And if I were to do the same transformation here, I would see that by replacing all the um, NMOSes with PMOSes and by switching this to power supply, and pulling this down to ground, I obtain a NAND with the parallel of the PMOSes as opposed to a NOR with the parallel of the NMOSes. So we have achieved what we set out to do originally. We can build circuitry that implements logic gates. Is this the best we can do about it? No, we have not mentioned CMOS yet, uh, which is a dramatic improvement over NMOS and PMOS. Why is it an improvement? What benefits does it give us? How does it work? Why is it that Practically all electronics nowadays are made out of CMOS instead of any other technologies. Well, to find out, like, subscribe, and don't miss the next video. See you there.